Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to part two of this press break build. Um, if you haven't watched part one, uh, then make sure to click on the link here in the upper right or check the uh, link in the video description. For everyone else, um, this is where we left off last time. Adding a linear scale to the limit switches and making the backstop. Let's start out with making and installing the backstop or back gauge. A backstop will tell you how far back you need to place the bend part. A backstop is pretty much a stop that tells you how far you need to place the part to make the bend. Now I do want to mention that the Cyclops press brake tool does have a simple stop. Essentially it's a stop that slides on a rod and it uses some threaded rod to allow for adjustment. While it does work, I just wanted to improve upon it. My goal was to make some type of numeric control stop, I guess. And this is kind of what I came up with. It uses a linear guide actuator powered by NEMA 23 stepper motor uh, and controlled by a very simple controller. This semi auto motion system should help me set how far back or forward the stop needs to be versus doing it fully manual. The stop itself is just some aluminum flat bar and to accurately measure how far the stop is in reference with the bend line, I attached a glass scale to the linear actuator using a bracket to tie it all in. The measurement is then recorded by the digital readout or DRO of the glass scale. To mount this backstop system in reference with the press brake tool, I make some custom brackets and a plate that attaches it to the frame. Now with all that out of the way, Let's get into building this thing out. Once cut, I take it over and mark where the bend line will be. After marking the bends, I take it over and align the brackets per the drawing and my build plans, and then mark and drill a hole so that I can mount it to the square nuts here. Once drilled, I then install the brackets to the linear actuator with the glass scale. And pretty much begin squaring everything up and, and install my tab into the slot to make sure it's rigid. I then take it over to do a rough mock-up where it would sit on the frame. I'm, I'm guessing somewhere in the middle. set the height, I take a piece of scrap plate and slightly shim it so that when I mount my aluminum stop, I want it to barely travel over the V-block without hitting it. I then install my brake press tool holder plates. These plates are to allow for me to adjust the press brake tool so that it's square with the back gauge.
Now let's move on to attaching the glass scale to the linear actuator. Take note where the scale sits and how it's mounted. First, make sure the little red plastic is installed in between the reader. Here, I'm sliding the reader, keeping clearances in mind for when I install the back gauge linear scale bracket. To offset the bracket from rubbing, I shim it with some washers. Then install the aluminum back plate. Important note here is to square this up with the forward V block lower die. I then make some final tweaks to the bolt that attaches to the reader so that the reader is able to travel freely back and forth. And again, double checking squareness with the help of the magnetic square block that I picked up from Genuine Metalworks, which I highly recommend you get if you're looking to help make it easier to get repeatable bends. After all this, this is how it should sort of look. To power and control the linear actuator, I use a stepper driver, a power supply, and a simple controller, and wire everything up using a wire diagram that I made for this system. For more information on this, check out my build plans in the video description. Alright, now with all that done, let's do a quick demonstration on an actual part. So first, the initial setup is you want to Select the V block opening of choice. Um, because I'm using a loving gauge, I select the V opening of 22 millimeters. And then next is to bring the upper punch die barely close enough to the V block, then to center it on both sides. Next, I move the back gauge stop to the center of the V-block. The V-block is 60 millimeters wide, so I just take half of that which, which to find its center, which is 30 millimeters. Then, I nudge the controller until I get it just right. Then measure it with, then measure it with some calipers. Then you're going to take a few measurements, left, middle, right, and adjust until you're 30 millimeters or very close to it. Once I'm satisfied, I go up to my DRO and zero out my X. That's pretty much your zero mark at the center of that V block. Next, I then mark the center of the part and the center of the press brake tool. Doing so will make sure my part is close with the center of the press brake tool. So this way it bends uniformly. Next, I take my first part out of the so many that I'm going to make and I mark the where the bend line needs to be. For this example, we're going to use this measurement. This is kind of my visual reference to make sure that everything is 
going to be bending where it's supposed to be. And then I set my magnetic square block. Now I'm ready to move the bag gauge to the desired dimension or at the bend line. Now I'm ready to set the part against the backstop, checking that it's square with the magnetic square block and the back gauge itself. Once confirmed, I preset my limit switch. Then proceed to bend the part to the desired angle. It will initially take a little bit of back and forth to dial in the limit switch depth. I do this by making small turns at a time until I get it just right. This one is slightly underbent, so I back off the limit switch adjustment a little more. Vice versa if it was overbent. You can see the bend occurred right at the designated bend line or at least very close to it. It may take one to two samples to get that perfect 90 degree bend. One other way to tweak the bend afterwards is to take it over to a table vise. Again, we are using a cheap mechanical limit switch, so keep that in mind on the pros and cons as far as the response time and sensitivity and how that may have an impact on the results you wish to achieve. Now let's see the results and how close we got this sample to the drawing. off by about 15th out, which isn't too shabby, I would say, for a homemade setup. I suspect this could have something to do with the sheet metal bending term called bend allowance. However, I'll leave that discussion to be had in the comment section. And because I'm running out of time today, I'll have to cut it short here and go over installing the glass scale to the limit switch for the next video. So you guys don't leave empty handed. Here are some snippets for what to expect when the next video drops. This includes me refining the limit switch bracket and attaching the glass scale. And for those who have purchased or actually plan to get my press break build plans, I want to mention when available, you'll be getting exclusive access to an in-depth video breaking down all the components I use. 
along with the wiring instructions and how I connect the limit switches and the backstop, as well as user settings on how they control the back gauge. Tying this all together into this custom control box. And as the making of this video, I'll be making a small limited batch of this press brake DIY well pack kit, which will help if you want to build something similar to this. For more details on that, check out the links in the, the video description or on my website. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that thumbs up or thank you button and subscribe for DIY projects like this. That's it for me. See you in the next one. Later.